Coming in, and um, this is the uh, first anniversary celebration of Hooray. I think we should give a round of applause for Brian. Davis and asked me to go to lunch and meet them. And oh God, I got really excited, went to have lunch with them. Um, we spent two hours eating and talking, and eventually they said to me, Well, we'd like you to come and do Doctor Who. And I thought, Oh wow, I mean, that's extraordinary, because I was, you know, you can see I'm an old kid, but I was, you know, <laughs> I've got old enough, and I was a bit younger than them, but I was still an old kid. And um, I said to them at the end, Well, because I can't. I mean, Russell T. Davis is um, probably 10 to 12, he'd be insulted by me, so he may be 10 to 12 years younger than me, but that's about it. Phil was much younger than the, the producer. But I wondered why they asked me to come back, because you, it's a young man's game now to do the action adventure. But I've been built to do action adventure, and great romantic and good stories, but I like doing action adventure. I'd like to do but I and I asked them what it was. What what, what 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 was it that made you decide to give me a block they were giving me? A block means one story. So they said, Well the reason why eventually this was at the dinner, the reason why is because we've looked at your stuff from the case like design. Uh, and also other work that you've done. The case of the da and, uh, Revelation of the Dark. And um, we've met anybody with the ancient and kind of tired technology, well, it wasn't tired technology, the technology is young and, and you get excited. But it was, Doctor Who was tired, it was not loved anymore. It was loved by John Nathan Turner, but the BBC didn't love it, they were quietly hoping it would go away for some reason. 
but there was still an audience. There were seven million people in that. And in those days, we had 15 million people watching Doctor Who, but when I did it, it was down to seven. And it stayed at seven, and we, in fact, we got eight million on games, and I was like, wow. Um, and he said, Russell said, anybody that can create three great cliffhangers visually that you did um, in what was dying series, uh, and also to bring the energy and the excitement that you brought to the technology that was not really there yet, um, had to be on board. We had to see what you could do now. So oh, wow, I was really thrilled. When the contract came through, it was for two blocks because of what I didn't know was they, were, they wanted to introduce Cybermen. So I didn't even know I was going to be dealing with Cybermen. I was really thrilled with these and what we might do with them. But it wasn't just Cybermen. The next story, which was the end of the series, was Cybermen and Daleks. And uh, they decided they would give me the chance to have a go at the two stories. What happened though was because of financial, although they were throwing money at Doctor Who, and still are, um, they only throw a certain amount, not that many, just how many coming out there is. <coughs> I had to do, normally you do, I think 15 uh, uh, episodes of 11 days, so it's two episodes, two parts of it will be, um, I think 20 days we were allowed. I had 52 days shoot to do, but nobody's ever done it, but 52 days shoot on Doctor Who with all the effects and all the night shoots that we had to do for the side of the first story, uh, Age of Steel, and, and um, I forgot what it's called, Age of Steel, and Rise of the Sun. <coughs> it was, um, it was, there were 15 night shoots to start with. Now that may seem nothing to anybody you know, that hasn't worked at all in film or television, but 15 night shoots is a lot, it all in a row, that, that is hard to do. Um, it's hard on the metabolism, if you, if you, can, you completely lose um, your natural kind of waking up and going to sleep. You, you, your whole world is turned upside down. And what happens is you don't really sleep properly um, and you're working on adrenaline or something else, some other fuel as well. I, mean, I don't know how you do it, but you, we just got through it. Um, but it was the toughest shoot I've ever had in my life. But the results were just brilliant. I mean, not because of me, I mean, they were just brilliant because of David Tennant, his energy. I yell out, I was saying to somebody here today, who asked me, could I put a quote that I would say on the set somewhere? So I said, give it loads of pace and energy! <laughs> <laughs> and that's, and that's, what I, but that's what I say to every shot we do. I just remind the artists, we've talked about it, we've waffled around, we've played about it, we've discussed the effects and whatever. So it's, there's been this excitement that's been dying because we have this long conversation about what about I'm going to do that bit. So just before we do the tape, I just remind the actors, actually all that's now been sorted out. Just remember this is all about you. So I don't say that, I just say, right, please no, energy, let's go, let's do it, let's make this live. And they do. Yeah. And that's and if you forget, sometimes they don't. I, I feel it necessary to do that. And that's not the only thing I say. <laughs> <laughs> but having said a lot, waffle off, but having said a lot. Um, said all the things I would dream of, having seen what's going on and the way they're going to think, for example, David Tennant. I don't tell him how to play Doctor Who, but I see what's on offer, what he's going to do with the scene. And I say, there's the set, you've got to come through that door, you've got to walk out of that door with Ben Shield, that's going to blow up. Let's see what happens in between, how. And he comes in, sees the set, or he did, sees the set and feels what he's done that before, and he will play it. And if he's with other actors, I say to them, just trust your instinct to see what happens, the way he's going to play that scene. Then I heard him and say, I, you can't do that there, you know, I, I, I would like to have a bit more comedy at this moment. I think you should be much more like that. That's how I deal with it. I don't take and tell anybody how to do any of it. I see what's wrong because that's the actor's job. The actor has a character he's going to look after. Some actors can't do that. Some actors really need to be directed, so you go in and help. But, uh, I forgot how we got on talking. <laughs> <laughs>